What if Tupac had survived in 1996 and lived until today? In September 1996, after attending a Mike Tyson boxing match in Las Vegas, Tupac Shakur was tragically shot in a drive-by shooting. But what if he hadn't died? What if Tupac had survived the attack and lived on? In this video, we'll explore an alternative history where Tupac not only lived, but thrived, shaping music, culture, and society up until today. Chapter 1. A Surviving Warrior After surviving the shooting, Tupac faced a critical legal situation. He was still on parole from his previous conviction, and being involved in a violent incident could be considered a parole violation. Instead of continuing down a destructive path, Tupac made the decision to take his legal matter seriously. His legal team successfully argued that he had been the victim of the Las Vegas attack and that his involvement in the incident didn't warrant further legal consequences. Though he narrowly avoided a return to prison, the experience was a wake-up call for Tupac. He realized the danger of continuing to associate with Suge Knight and Death Row Records, and in 97, just a year after the shooting, Tupac left Death Row to form his own label, Machiavelli Records. This marked a turning point in his life as he distanced himself from the violence that had nearly claimed his life. Leaving Death Row and surviving the shooting led Tupac to reconsider his relationships with his rivals, particularly his feud with the notorious B.I.G., Biggie Smalls. At that time, their rivalry was one of the most infamous in hip-hop history. However, in this alternate scenario, Tupac wanted to move past the feud and take a more positive, constructive path. In 1997, Tupac extended an olive branch to Biggie. The two artists met privately to resolve their differences and end the tension that had captivated the hip-hop world. Tupac, having survived a life-threatening experience, realized it was time to move beyond the violence and diss tracks that had defined their rivalry. During their meeting, both Tupac and Biggie acknowledged that misunderstandings and media exaggeration had fueled their conflict. Their reconciliation became a major turning point in the hip-hop community. The notorious East Coast versus West Coast who feud began to subside as a result of this piece. Tupac and Biggie, now reconciled, emerged as two respected giants of the industry. Tupac's music, while still raw and unfiltered, began to shift focus. His 1998 album, Resurrection, addressed police brutality, systemic racism, and the struggles of black America, reflecting his new perspective after narrowly escaping death and potential incarceration. Chapter 2, Tupac in the New Millennium. As the 2000s rolled in, Tupac was more than just a rapper. He had become an activist and a respected figure in Hollywood, collaborating with directors like Spike Lee, producing films that reflected the challenges faced by the black community. His earlier roles in Juice and Poetic Justice were just the beginning. By the early 2000s, Tupac was using film as another platform to speak out on racial injustice and inequality. In music, Tupac continued to work with some of the biggest names. By 2004, he had collaborated with Eminem and Dr. Dre to release the joint album, Soldiers of Struggle, filled with social commentary and messages of empowerment. Tupac's influence helped shape the direction of hip hop for the next decade. Chapter three, Tupac in politics. In 2008, Tupac publicly supported Barack Obama during his presidential campaign. Obama's message of hope and change aligned perfectly with the causes Tupac had been fighting for his entire life. Tupac's speeches and activism further motivated young African Americans to take an interest in politics and social reform. By the 2000s, tens, Tupac was not just a voice in music, but an activist for broader issues. He collaborated with artists like Kanye West, Kendrick Lamar, participating in tours like Watch the Throne, where he used his platform to address social injustice. Tupac's influence reached new heights when he began considering entering politics himself. In the aftermath of Donald Trump's election in 2016, Tupac intensified his fight against racism and inequality, becoming a vocal critic of the administration. He even began working on a documentary series called Revolution in America, focusing on the history of systemic racism and the black experience in the US. In 2020, Tupac made his first foray into politics by running for local office, aiming to create real change from within the system. Chapter four, a new voice for a new generation. 
As digital music became the norm in the 2020s, Tupac embraced the changing landscape, working with new generation artists like Kendrick Lamar and J. Cole, mentoring them while also collaborating on projects. Tupac became the bridge between the old school legends and the new wave of socially conscious rappers. By 2024, Tupac was 53 years old and still making music. His songs had evolved from their early street-focused themes to deep, reflective explorations of politics, inequality, and the struggles of the marginalized. His influence extended beyond music, with his activism and guidance shaping the careers of many younger artists. Chapter 5. The Legacy of a Living Legend Tupac's survival in 1996 allowed him to become not just an iconic rapper, but a leader for social change. He built a legacy that went far beyond music, becoming a force in politics, film, and activism. His thug life philosophy evolved into a movement, a way of life that represented the fight against poverty, injustice, and inequality. Today, Tupac's music continues to inspire millions, and his message still resonates with new generations. If he had survived that fateful night in 1996, Tupac would not only have changed hip hop, but he would have also helped transform society. This alternative history documentary was prepared by the M's Nightmare Channel. Stay safe.